Hi everybody, in this video we are looking at saltatory conduction which is the way that ner nerve impulses travel down an axon which is myelinated. Um, we're going to start off just thinking about how the impulse travels anyway without worrying about the myelin and then we'll add the myelin in at the end. Okay, so how does the action potential travel along the axon? So obviously the idea here, um, if we think about an axon, of, uh, here we've got a motor neuron, so here's the axon, and we know that the impulse is going to start here. So this part here, these dendrites, will be um, connected to a relay neuron. There'll be a synapse, so the impulse will come down the relay neuron and then cross the synapse, and then it will start here at the tip of the dendrites, and then the impulse is going to travel all the way down the axon to the end. Okay, so it starts there and goes all the way down. So we want to know how. We understand by now how an action potential happens in terms of uh, the opening and closing of voltage-gated channels, but we want to know, okay, if an action potential starts here, how does it get all the way down here? So if we start off uh, just by thinking about our, um, our axon here, so this whole thing is the axon, so this is the membrane um, We've got sort of two sides there showing the membrane on the outside of the axon. And our norming, normal resting potential, remember, means that we have a more negative interior and a more positive exterior. And our resting potential, as usual, is um, approximately um, minus 70 millivolts. So if we just take one section at a time. So this section here, what we're saying is this is the part where the action potential um, is initiated where it first starts off. So that means that there's an influx of sodium ions into the axon, and as soon as that happens, that means that this particular part of the axon here, so this membrane here, is going to be depolarized, and if it depolarizes enough, then we'll see a change in the charge, like a reversible in the charge, so that we now have a more positive inside compared to the outside. So Again, this would, if we think back to what we've looked at previously, this depends on things like whether the threshold value has been reached and so on. But ultimately, if this happens, then that means that this section of the neuron um, has an action potential taking place. Okay, so the red here represents that this there's an action potential happening here. At the moment, all of the rest of the neuron, all the way down there, is still in the resting potential state. Okay, so what happens next? As you can see here, we've now got two sections of the neuron where you've got um, more positive on the inside here and then more negative. So basically what we have here is what we call a local circuit. Um, you have the same on the outside as well, but it's the inside that we're um, going to focus on. So we've got a local circuit, so whenever you've got a difference in you know, charge, concentration, things like that, then you often see movement. And remember, that the difference in charge here is a result of ions. So what's going to happen is sodium ion is going to diffuse down the axon. So there's more sodium here, which is why it's positively charged or more positively charged on the inside. So it diffuses down to the next section. And because there's now more sodium on the inside here, that means that this part of the membrane in this section has also now just been depolarized. And if enough sodium travels down, then that depolarization causes voltage-gated sodium channels to open, which means more sodium comes in. So let's just go back and think about that again. So you've had sodium enter the axon here, moving down. So that's depolarization, and we know that depolarization opens voltage-gated channels. So sodium from outside moves into the membrane, so we now have a much higher concentration of sodium ions, which again could trigger more salt, both more voltage-gated sodium ions uh, channels to open, which basically means we are going to have an action potential in this section of the neuron as well. Now, um, the previous section here, by now, has repolarized and has moved back but I've used yellow because this is now in the hyperpolarization stage. 
Okay, so we've already seen, we've seen now that the action potential has moved. It started off here, and we've now got the action potential here. So basically the same thing happens, but the question now is, why does the action potential not go back the other way? Sodium is going to move down this way, but it doesn't move that way. Um, that's Okay, let me just change that a little bit. The idea here, let me go back. We've got here a local circuit. So in theory, the sodium is going to move down there. It's not actually that it doesn't move. So we could have sodium moving that way. But if sodium does move down here, an action potential will not be generated. So if we get sodium coming down here, then this section here is depolarized, but it doesn't cause any voltage-gated channels to open because this section of the membrane is in the hyperpolarization state. The action potential has just happened. And as soon as the action potential has happened, those sodium ion channels, which have now closed, once they close, they become inactivated. And that means they can't be open again, no matter what the um, depolarization level is. So this section of the membrane here, even if sodium moves down because of the local circuit that's now been created, the extra sodium here, it might depolarize the membrane, but it will not allow any more sodium ions to come in, and therefore it can't change the voltage enough to be an action potential. So that means that the action potential can only go down this way because this section of the membrane here, once the sodium goes down, once the sodium goes down there, then it causes voltage-gated channels to open, which means sodium ions, more sodium ions move in, which means that an action potential is generated. So this section is now in the action potential. The section that was previous by now has moved back into its um, hyperpolarization state and therefore cannot form an action potential here. This original section by now has moved back to its resting potential. So this section here is now able to have an action potential um, again. So if there, for example, were another impulse coming from the relay neuron, or if this was a sensory neuron and there was another stimulus at the beginning up here, then this section, this beginning section of the axon, axon um, could there could be an action potential. So in theory, we could have an action potential here, and another one following right behind it. But they always go in the same direction, moving down. Okay, so that's how the action potential travels down the axon, but now we want to look at this idea of saltatory conduction. So in a myelinated neuron, we have um, myelin. Okay, so here's the, here's the myelin. And we know that the myelin is wrapped all the way around, and in between the myelin are these little nodes. These are the nodes of Ranvier. So these are areas of the axon which are unmyelinated. They do not have any myelin. And this speeds up the impulse. That's because you can only get um, an influx of sodium ions at these nodes here. Because these are insulated, so there are no voltage-gated ion channels. Um, there can be no movement of ions in or out of the axon here. So the only place you can actually have an action potential is at these nodes. If sodium ions enter here, then you get an action potential, okay, as you can see here by this um, change in the, in, the, in the voltage across the membrane. So just as we've looked, we've now got this local circuit, which means that the sodium moves down the axon. So the same idea happens. The sodium moves down. The next section would uh, become depolarized, and then you get an action potential here. Oops, sorry. So there's no difference. But the reason this is faster is because the only 
places where voltage gated channels have to open and close and where ions have to come in are at these nodes. So if you think about the distance from this end here all the way down to this end here. If there is no myelin, then all the way along here, 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 all the way along, for the action potential to travel, you'd have to have this sort of wave of gated voltage uh, gated channels opening, sodium coming in, sodium diffusing along a little bit, depolarization, voltage gated channel opens, sodium comes in. That would have to happen all the way down here. And it takes time for channels to open and it takes time for sodium to move in. It's very quick but it still takes time. With myelin you only have to have that happening here and here and here. So the number of voltage gated channels that have to open in order for the action potential to travel all the way down is less and therefore the time taken for the action potential is less because not as many channels have to open and sodium doesn't have to diffuse in in as many places. So as a result, the movement of the action potential down a myelinated neuron is much quicker. And that is the end of that. Thank you.